Hour two. Our gorgeous Tuesday afternoon, the first day of May, Derby Week, excitement abounds. And we're talking Shea Patterson, Harbaugh, and what it means. And I just brought up, look, I think it's the end of the leash. Uh, this free ride that Harbaugh's on has to end. And if you do not get to Indy, uh, he should be coaching for his job in 2019. Simple. That's it. Free ride can't last forever. And we're just talking to you guys about it. I mean, Shea Patterson represents that, right? Mike, what does it say about Harbaugh? He needs a transfer. Where is the QB whisper? You know what? I think we got to drop that. Look, we're beyond it. I can't go back and, and retroactively talk about mistakes that were made or what he should have done or could have done. Here's where we are. He landed a really talented young man. This is the answer, okay? So I, I don't care. I know what it says about Harbaugh. He came in, he thought he was going to be the smartest guy in the room. He came in and thought he would coach circles around these college putzes, and it hasn't worked. He thought he could treat the quarterback position like free agency. That's not how it works. The college game is about patience and pragmatism, and you develop quarterbacks, and you stack quarterbacks. He didn't do it. But if he gets his lightning in a bottle and he gets Patterson, he'll still end up in the same place. So let's just drop it. That's my take. What do you think Patterson gives Michigan a real shot to win the Big Ten? I mean, if he's as good as some people think he is, sure. I need to see that to believe it. Talented kid, saw a few games, not fair to judge him based on, oh, well, here's his numbers against 1AA teams and here's his numbers against good teams. All I'll tell you is I've heard multiple people say to cover the SEC, there's no guarantee he starts at Ole Miss this year because the kid that took over for him played better than him. So I need to see it. I'm going to give Shea Patterson a clean slate. I don't care what recruit he was. I don't care what school he went to. I don't care. I don't care about any of it. Put a helmet on and all that goes away. What are you? What do you do? That's it. I agree 100% if Shea Patterson is not the starting QB, then this is a dumpster fire. Uh, I need Harbaugh to win two of the following. At ND, at MSU, at OSU. Amen. Got to win two of three. Got to. And, and I'll tell you, if he doesn't, I dare you to call up and argue. It's ridiculous. Not a, not a fair to put all the pressure on Shea Patterson. I feel bad for him. I agree, Mike, enough's enough. But the thing is, I don't think Shea will be enough to win with the O-line. Uh, more to ticket text coming in. Harbaugh does have a playoff berth in my eyes. We got screwed by hometown refs in Columbus. Oh, my Lord. Mm. Why do some people still point to that? Like, come on, guys. Can we just move on from that? Suck up, dick! You understand that no one will want the job if Harbaugh's run out, right? The U of M program needs consistency. Winning will follow. Okay, Matt. Sure thing. Nobody would want the U of M job. Yep, you're right. Matt. And no one's running him out. You give a coach five years and he doesn't win a damn thing, that's not being run out. Come on, man. From a Michigan fan, just curious what makes you think Michigan is capable of beating MSU or OSU. Besides Shea, I don't know what improvements have been made. Boy, oh boy, some of you people love carrying this dude's popsicles. What is the matter with you? Honest to God. But let me ask you this, though. Because you're saying it's kind of a conversation of what should happen versus what will happen. Do you think... That overall, Michigan fans, if that at the end of this year, if they don't go to Indianapolis, don't play for the Big Ten title, do you think it would be to a point now where the majority of Michigan fans would be upset? Yes. Do you think that you because you've always kind of said too that that blind loyalty is something that these Michigan fans always have? Well, I, I think there's but, a certain portion of every fan base. I just think the portion with U of M's a little bit higher. Um, but no, Mike. At the end of this year, if they it, if they're one and seven against their their you know MSU and OSU, and they don't win the division, they don't go to Indy. Yeah, I think a lot of people would say he's coaching for his job in 2019. Kind of flip on Harbaugh, which never. Yeah, but Mike, that's how life works. That's how business works. I know, and and I I don't think it'd be a hot take to say that if if that happens this year that you could. Have people calling for his job after this year? Okay, they can do whatever they want, but that's not happening. Yes. No, it wouldn't. Our writer, Will Birchfield, has entered the studio, and he is wearing the largest flat-brim hat I've ever seen. Will looks like a bobblehead. He had to take care of some business with David in here, apparently. That hat does not fit his head. That, How is he wearing that? 
He looks like Buddy Lee. One of those snapbacks, yeah. But it's it, the brim. He looks like the kid from Sandlot <laughs> when he was wearing the hat with the with the fish on it, the bass hat. Right. Great all movie. Right. All right. Good talk. Ticket text 97136. Let's get a few more calls in the mix. we got to talk Tom Brady momentarily. Les is up next. Hi, Les. Hey, Mike. How are you? Good, buddy. Um, I just got to give you kudos. I'm an out-of-state listener and uh, grew up in the state, and I was really looking forward to listening to you after the Spartans lost, waiting for your Homer comments, and you didn't do it. I, I don't do it. Said, you didn't do it. You're, you know what? You're not like CNN, and I'm proud of you for that. That's a good thing. Thank you. With that being said, I've been a big hardball supporter. I think he's done a great job at bringing credibility back, but you're right. Got to win. You know what? The excuses of we had too many young kids last year, quarterback. That team is good enough right now to contend for a title, and they got to win. They've got to win. They, the defense had a lot of pressure put on them last year because, God forbid, our quarterback hit one of 20 passes. And uh, I think they got it. I think the Patterson kid will be good enough. Not saying he's a draft pick. He'll be good enough to get him to where they need to go. And uh, I think you're right. Michigan fans are mad. I listen to them all over the place. They won a championship, and the time is up. Uh, you notice Harbaugh did not go on his uh, excursions this year in the off season like he's done in years past. What do you mean he's in, realized... France, he's in France right now? Well, but that was planned already, and then they didn't do football. And I don't have a problem with a school giving their kids some academic and educational experience. You never saw him off campus. You never heard about him. I think he realizes the ship's got to get tight because uh, I think he's wearing his welcome out if he doesn't win. They've got to win. Yeah, and, You're right. and, oh, Les, I appreciate it. I, I just think, you know, again, it's not it's not Spartans, Wolverines, anything of the sort. I mean, have Mark D'Antonio go out and, and not do anything in, in four years and not be able to beat a rival. See what my tone is. I mean, guys, I'm he, look, I'm talking about what's happening on the field. I don't play pretend. You've got Shea Patterson now. Okay. You don't go out and win the Big Ten this year, or at least win the division. Just get to Indy. He should be coaching for his job in 2019. That's it. That's not disrespectful. That's not unfair. That That's not smarmy. You don't get a free ride forever. And if it doesn't work with Shea Patterson, then here's the deal. The odds suggest it ain't going to work. But what that last caller said is important, too, because I I think it is refreshing this offseason to not hear about like all the it. sideshow. We're not hearing about Jim Harbaugh climbing a tree, jumping off of his swimming pool with his shirt on. No, no, no. Gatorade week, in the, the cereal. Week of the MSU game, jumping into a pool fully clothed. And then you wonder why your team comes out and gets their teeth blown out. But that's what's refreshing. We haven't heard about it at all this offseason, uh, you, you know really. What, you know what it makes you wonder? Just, you know, conjecture, but I think it's harmless. It just makes you wonder. If the people close to him pulled him aside and went, hey, cool out. Yeah. I would hope that Ward Manuel would do something like that. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Only thing that guy's good for is pulling the golf cart up. Jim, where do you need to go next? He don't have a boss. You well, that, me? that was the funny part in that documentary, the All or Nothing documentary, when Jim Harbaugh's son asked him in the car, uh, said, Daddy, are you still the boss around here or not? And he goes, he goes, nope, nope, I'm not the boss. I have a boss. Tell you what. Lose the MSU and OSU. Yeah. Find out real quick you're not the boss anymore. You know who the boss of college programs are? Not to be disrespectful to Ward Manual, it's the boosters. You lose the boosters, you lose your job. This ain't about an athletic director. AD is a sweet gig. It's about the boosters. It's just such polar opposites with Michigan football and basketball because it, it, John Beeline just goes about his business, doesn't do any, doesn't, not, doesn't show off, doesn't put himself in the news. No sideshows. But with Harbots, the whole program's been just uh, just wacky. The but past to his years. credit, it's been very quiet this offseason. This year, this offseason has the opposite of how it's been in New England. I want to get to that situation next. Ninety-seven-one.